Hello. Hello. And welcome back to another video from B and Joe. Today we'll be doing some more cooking. This is a really creepy view. Oh, I didn't like it. <laughs> you can be there. You got creepy. So, oh, thank you. Today we'll be showing you how we cook our Sunday dinner. <laughs> your parents house for certain dinners but with it being locked down we've become culinary chefs ourselves and are expert Sunday dinner makers. I know everyone out there may have their own tricks but we're going to show you ours. Our first point to remember is everyone makes out a roast dinner to be difficult right? And it probably is if you do it the right way like a lot of people and stuff. The trick is timing it's all about timing actually like you have it like if you're doing a nice simple one, literally getting your potatoes ready so they can go in. Or buy roasties ready made by Aunt Bessie. Yeah, but we're gonna go from scratch. Uh and just it's just having everything ready just to go in and then you just leave it for time. It's yeah. nothing crazy. And then you sit down, you relax, you wait for your relax to go off, and you're good to go. Yes. Right there. So we're having beef. Um and to start we put the oven on for about half an hour so far to preheat. Um, so now Joe's going to get out of the fridge, we're going to slather it in oil, but I only have the one cow oil spray. Do you want to know why? Okay, I'll tell you. We don't normally buy one cow oil spray because, you know, who cares what, what, what calorie oil you have. Um, but the only oil in the shop that I could buy was really big ones. Well, yeah, but they're really big oils and they, it wouldn't have fitted in my drawer. And also if it did fit in the drawer, it wouldn't have looked nice. So I bought the one cow one because it was smaller. <laughs> I was cheaper as well, so it was fine. So, just as a bit of an insight, what Bee's talking about with the drawer is... <laughs> we have handmade drawers for under our stairs, but the oils sit in the top, top one, and obviously things have to fit in this angle. So if Bee opens it... See? So the one cow oil fits in there. You see, it does fit... Um, if you just move the Dr Pepper, it does fit two litre bottles of pop in there, so just in the corner, but there's limited space, so we have to be really careful. And why well, fill it with oil? So I've got the one cow, but if I spray it seven times, I'll have seven cow oil. Oh, it doesn't like two faces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've sprayed seven cows of oil, <laughs> if you're calorie counting, on the bottom of the pan. Yeah, I'm going to just turn this down so you don't see our faces. Beef? So, beef the pan. Here. Ugh. Right, now, now it goes to being a Joe job, not a B job. Yeah, it could be a B job. Is it going to be a B job? I don't really want to touch it. Okay. I'm going to calorie spray it again. Um, I say it again, I haven't sprayed it once yet. And then Joe's going to rub some salt into it because I don't want to do that either. Yes. Oh, sugar. I put quite a lot of salt on it. And then you just make sure that it gives it a nice set outside to it. That's pretty much what I do. I just give it a quick rub. One normally we buy our um, we buy our meat from the butchers, but we bought it from Tesco's not too long ago, and I put it in the oven. I didn't realise I put like the little foam bit that comes with it in the oven as well. Yeah. That was like to Lovely, lovely. Um, right. But so meat and timings on meat. So we do the same thing pretty much for most of our meats, but. Quite often you'll find if uh, if you're wondering how long to put your meat in the oven for is one google it two ask your butcher when you buy it or three check the packaging um, and then you'll find out the best length of time it's like it's normally like 30 minutes per 500 kilos per pork but i can't remember what it is with beef. we always put ours in for 45 minutes to begin with and then we'll go back and check in because we don't like we like our meat, not rare rare, but like a medium rare so it's a yeah. bit bit red in the middle so it's not too well done so alexa 45 minute timer. 45 minutes, starting now. See, Alexa's Anyone's your Alexa best friend. who's gone off, I apologise. Alexa is your best friend. Right, let's get on to prepping. Yeah. Right, sweet potato. Oh, I just got a stick on this one, potato. And then another potato. Fast it. This is not going to go well, but we'll give it a go. Carrot. I'm going to peel it, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to chop it up into, into potato-sized pieces, and then I'm going to put it in some boiled water, 
no non-boiled water and let it boil whilst it's in there and then drain it put it in a not a frying pan put it in a tray and chuck it in the oven with some salt and one curry spray oil yeah we roast uh, we part bake our potatoes pot boil, pot boil our potatoes we don't bake them. Pot boil. so let's 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 get some peeling i'm actually if you've watched that other video where i was uh, peeling an onion i'm far better at peeling a potato potato has been peeled yeah, that's right I will place this to the side. Okay, I'm going to cut the potato. Um, fun fact, myself and Joe have our potatoes a bit different. So Joe will have them... Um, like, like what you'd normally expect the roasty to look like. Yeah, does the roasty look just hot? Got this much or do I cut it again? I'll go in half again. So Joe would have them like a normal roasty. You'll probably have five or six. How many do you want? That's perfect for me. Five? Yeah. And then I'll cut these into bee, bee potatoes? Yeah. Um, and I'm not a big fan of the texture of potatoes. So I have what we call princess potatoes, which are this this small. Crispy. Crispy potatoes. And what we'll do with these, instead of putting them in straight away, we let the water boil first, and then these go in the boiling water to part boil. Well, I think it's called blanching. Don't call me that. It quite possibly, I think that too. So, they're potatoes. If you whack them in there for me. So there's Joe's ones in there. You can fill it with water. We'll leave these ones for now. I'll take you with me. So Joe is just going to fill the potatoes with some water. So we just fill it to the top of the potatoes. Um, cold water as well is advised. Yeah, that's what we did. Cold water. And then I whack it on one of the rings and I'm just going to turn it on a high heat. And now, uh, mm, the pan's in better days. Yeah, that pan's the ropiest pan we own. And now we just let them boil and then when they're boiling we'll put the other potatoes in. So please pass it over to me to do the sweet potato. Uh, sweet potatoes are always huge in Tesco's so we end up using half for one thing, half for another thing. So we had sweet potato fries the other day, didn't we, for lunch, which was nice. So uh, I'm going to peel this one and then chop it into some chunks, right? So you want to lay in it? Mm -hmm. So uh, left with my sweet potato like this, I'm going to cut it into some chunks similar size to the ones that Bee had for her potatoes. We don't part boil this one. It's just um, it just goes into chunks. But sweet potato is notoriously hard to slice. So just gonna. We're going to probably end up using one tray for everything because there's only the two of us and this is a big tray. So um, I'm going to spray half of it now with oil for the sweet potatoes that we've done and then the parsnips will go on here as well. And then we'll add the potatoes to the other side before we cook. But once they boil, but they're not, not quite there yet. So, B's favourite one cal spray, which I have to say makes it easier to get an even coverage. I like an even coverage. Right, moving on to the parsnip. Um, first thing first, like the potatoes and the sweet potatoes. We're going to peel it, so here we go. Okay, so like you're saying, I'm going to cut the top bit off. I cut this in half, lengthways, down the middle, so I'm giving it an autopsy. Right, we're going to take a quick pause so I can put my little potatoes in the water because it's boiling. might splash. How long do we leave those in there for me? One minute and 30 seconds. 35 is all feeling risque. Risque. Right then, I'm going to take the middle bit out of these. So let's cut that off there. Cut this one off. There we go. Put some oil in here. Yeah, spray top on the top. One of the things that I used to do, but you don't like it, so I'd stop doing it. It's a bit too sweet for me. Is I did like a, su uh, a sugar and cinnamon kind of mix that I sprinkled on top, so it could be a bit caramelised. Yeah, but I find it a little bit too sweet, so we go commando. We've got also a carrot. We probably won't use all of this because it's just for me, because Joe will have cooked carrots, but I'm a freak who will only like raw carrots. I just don't like the texture of a a soft carrot, just nah, it's not for me. 
So we'll peel it all again, as you already know, as you've seen me peel multiple vegetables today, I'm really good at this part of the cooking. Right, now we're on to carrot. We'll chop the top off. Um, like I say, I probably won't have to eat all of this, so I'll just chop it in the middle for now. And I'm going to make carrot battens, because I think they're just more, a bit more enjoyable to eat that way. Like the parsnip, I'll cut it in half. And I, like, I like to cut them in half again. And there are my carrots. Can you use this? You do the holes on pointing on in the holes. Yeah, I can line them up now. And then I'm just going to use this. It's good as well because it protects me from the steam. So now I'm going to add them to our tree. Add it salted. Boiled, and now what we can do is we can probably get some tin foil and leave it covered until it's ready to. Yes. Go in. So, 30 minutes in the oven. I should really open the oven door before I try to film it one handed. I need to convince the camera that he wants to come down. Look the beef in there, crisping up nicely. So, 30 minutes for the roasties. But there's 30 minutes uh, left on the timer, so we should all be good there. So, so our legs have just been off, so I'm just preparing the area where we'll end up putting the beef to rest if it's ready. So, you open that and you step back for a minute because your glasses will steam up. <laughs> and that's just going to take them off because they're not steamed up. Or my eyeballs. Right, let's tap this beef out. So we'll take it out for a minute. I'm gonna close this back up to keep it, make sure the roast is staying nice and warm. Oh. Gonna, I'm gonna move my glasses out of the way. We're gonna move it across to our meat prepping area. Take it off the fork and wrap it in some tin foil. So we're gonna wrap it in a couple of layers of tin foil to keep the heat in while everything else cooks. layers of tin foil um, and then I also put some kitchen towels over it um, know, extra heat extra insulation darling yeah okay and now we wait for everything else to cook we've got our good old Aunt Bessie's we'll put these in the same tray as the potatoes and stuff because there's plenty of room on there it says they will take five, only five minutes to cook. So got some steamed veg to cook. So I am just gonna put about a centimeter or two centimeters in the bottom of this pan uh, of water so that we can steam it. And then we've got this special separator, uh, which we didn't have for ages, but most lots of people have like stack steamers, which is just the same. It's just perfect for me. Probably the perfect amount of water because you can see only a little bit's come through, but you just let a rough handful of veg out of this packet, pop the lid on and we steam away. Right, we're about to make some gravy because we've, everything's been finished so we've used the ah, stove. And the oven is off as well, uh oh, steamy camera lens, there we go, it's cleared. So, just gonna, I always do this little trick, right, I used the oven gloves earlier on but I always use a tea towel but I pull the the, the, uh, the draw out because it means I haven't got to reach so far in. So, but uh, look a at bit that. Crisp, aren't they? A little bit too long today for the parsnips, especially, but everything else, look at these roasties, they look great. Probably B, what's your carving top tips then? <laughs> Don't cut your finger off. Don't let Joe do it. No. Right, let's unravel this. It's nice and warm, actually. Right, before we start carving, I am not an expert at carving either, but I like to give everything a go. Carve this bad boy up. So I pierced the fork in quite deep, so I've got like a grounding system. <coughs> and now I just carve. My motto when carving is, it all goes down the same way anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, it's probably a bit too done for us today. I think everything's just a bit overcooked. But you know what? It still tastes lovely. Oh, actually, 
Let's get in, let's get in more rare as you go through. That's what happens, eh? So let's plate this up. Here we go. And first, oh look at this. Our plate is normally stiff, but one cow spray is where it's Yeah, the oil was much better, wasn't it? Better coverage. Perfecto. So what have we learnt from this one, this week's bee? Um, Cook the roasted veg for about 10 minutes less? Yeah, I think so. You never get it perfect every time, so... I think today we put, what my mistake was, I put a 5 minute timer on. No, a 10 minute timer on. So in 10 minutes, so I, this would have been done, but then the yolk pudding needs to go for 5 minutes, and actually they're in for an extra 5 minutes. And that's, I think, where they crisped up. Well, there we go. Complete roast dinner. And now the obvious great gravy pool. It's good gravy, though. Thank you for cooking with us. I hope you uh, learned something or it was helpful. And we look forward to seeing you again. What should they do, B? They should subscribe. Yeah, 100% subscribe. And cook a roast dinner? Yeah, also go, go cook a roast dinner. Um, right. Do you have any tips on how to cook a roast dinner that may help us with ours? Or the optimum time for roasties, let us know. So, uh, we'll yeah. see you next time.